Mender Rodriguez has a defender on him, unleashes with his right foot. Mm, goal! Barcelona! Hello everyone, Julian here for DNews. Artificial intelligence is the holy grail of computing and robotics. A machine that can intelligently analyze and manipulate its environment to achieve a goal is no small feat. And at first it was believed that the ultimate challenge for AI was winning a game of chess. It makes sense at a glance. Chess masters are brilliant strategists who carefully analyze and react to their opponents in order to win. If a computer can beat one of them, then surely we've cracked this nut, right? Well, a computer has beaten a chess master 18 years ago. So, why hasn't Skynet taken over? Because chess is not the perfect problem for AI that we once thought it was. Chess is actually relatively easy for a computer. Chess is only against one opponent and everything happens sequentially. A computer knows that when it makes a move, exactly what it intended to happen will happen. And even though there are millions and millions of possible moves, the slow pace of the game means the computer can calculate exactly all of them and cherry pick the best one. Basically, winning chess for a computer is less intelligence and more brute force calculations. But in 1997, the same year Deep Blue defeated chess champion Garry Kasparov, another tournament was started and it involved a game much harder for robots. I'm talking, of course, about soccer. Yes, soccer. The tournament is called the Robot Soccer World Cup, so soccer is the correct term. Plus, soccer is an old British slang for association football, so I don't want to see a bunch of comments about how it's called football. Anyway, soccer poses problems for AI that chess never could. Instead of reacting to one other player, there are entire teams. It's not turn-based, but constant and dynamic. The robot cannot predict exactly where the ball will go when it kicks it. It could take a strange bounce, or another robot could intercept it. That means that the robot has to react to unexpected events, and they have to do so quickly, none of this faffing about while it decides what to do. Plus, robot soccer is tractable. It can be easily recreated over and over anywhere in the world. It's not as challenging as creating a robot that's almost human, and it's not too expensive. It also helps that soccer is the most popular sport in the world, so robot soccer would probably gain some attention. And indeed it has. When the first RoboCup was held in Nagoya, Japan, there were 38 teams from 11 countries. Last year, there were 358 teams from 45 countries. The number of categories has grown immensely too. Originally, RoboCup had only three leagues, small robots that used an overhead camera, medium robots with their own sensors, and an AI playing soccer solely in a simulation. Then in 1999, RoboCup introduced the first league with legged robots. The robots they used? Specially programmed Sony Ibo dogs. Yes, those little plastic dogs your aunt got you for Christmas because she had no idea what to get you actually served a purpose advancing science. Now the legged divisions are humanoid and can either be a standard platform or an entirely custom build. They've also branched away from soccer and have competitions for search and rescue robots and robot dancers. Most importantly though, all the robots are autonomous and independent. The eventual goal is to have a robot soccer squad capable of beating the human World Cup champions by the year 2050. Watch out, Messi. Robonaldo is coming for you. Competition is one of the best ways to drive innovation, and when brilliant, dedicated people come together, they can achieve amazing things. In the same way, the United States Air Force is powered by airmen and fueled by innovation, and we'd like to thank them for sponsoring this episode. If you'd like to catch the 2016 RoboCup, it'll be held June 30th through July 4th in Leipzig, Germany. For more detailed information on exactly what's going on inside a robot's brain when it makes decisions, Amy covers that here. In their experiment, the decision was a pretty straightforward one. How to cross a room without hitting a pacing human. The visualization system they developed is called Measurable Virtual Reality. It uses an array of 18 motion capture cameras on the ceiling to track multiple simultaneous movements. Does robot soccer excite you? Do you think you'd ever watch a robot soccer league if they really could compete with humans? Let us know in the comments or on Facebook or Twitter. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time on DNews.